Alright, hi students, welcome to today's lesson which is on the kinetic particle theory also known as the three states of metal in the combined chemistry textbook. So this topic actually builds on a lot on what you learn in the lower secondary school and so you will notice that there's these three diagrams on this slide that might look very familiar to you. So first of all, the one in yellow which is the diagram representation of the structure of a solid. Next to it, as you can recall, this is the diagram for the liquid and the one on the extreme right is the one for the gases. So without further ado, let's move on to what this topic is about. So the first two lesson objective of this topic is to learn how to state the kinetic particle theory and also how to describe the solid, liquid and gaseous states of matter in terms of the kinetic particle theory itself. Before we move on further, let's do a quick recap on some of the properties of the solid, liquid and gas which you might have learned before. So, um, for the shape of the three states of metal, do you still remember what are they, how are they categorized? So for solid, it actually has a fixed shape. For liquid, it doesn't have a fixed shape. It takes up the shape of the container. Likewise, for gas, it actually takes up the shape of the container as well. In terms of density, the density for the solid is high. Likewise, for the liquid, as, and as for the gas, it's actually a very low density. As for volume, the solid and liquid both have a fixed volume, whereas the gas doesn't have a fixed volume. And last but not least, in terms of compressibility, which is the ability to compress the substance itself, solid and liquid substances cannot be compressed, whereas gaseous substances can be compressed. So before I introduce you to the kinetic particle theory, let's take a quick um let's do a quick activity, which is just a simple sitting wonder about a daily phenomenon that you have experienced before. So um, over here, I have a soup. I have a bowl of soup. Um, if you take a magnifying glass and look closely at the soup base itself, you observe that uh, there's something happening to the powder or the seasoning that you added in the soup. So over here is a short video that shows you what exactly is happening. So you notice that there's some orange powder-like um, things that are floating around. So those are actually the powder of the seasoning found in the soup. Think about. What could possibly cause all this powder to be floating around? That's number one. And why exactly are they moving in such a random motion? Because ultimately, aren't all this powder just a particular solid substance? Then how can it be moving around? And why is their movement random? This actually serves as a very important evidence of the kinetic particle theory by showing us that actually in reality, all metals are made up of tiny particles and these particles are always in constant random motions. By particles, I'm referring to the particles that you have learned in your lower secondary school days um, in terms of all these structures that you have seen over here. So all these, all these circular structures are the so-called particles itself. How does this relate to the video that you watched just now? So in the video that you watched just now, there were actually liquid particles in the soup. They are moving and they are bumping into the solid powder hence causing the solid powders to be floating around and in a random motion because like what we mentioned the kinetic particle theory says that all particles are in constant random motion so by knocking onto the solid powder it actually causes the powder to be move around the kinetic particle theory is so useful that we can actually use it to explain the properties and behavior of different states of metal so all these things we have we have actually covered this at the start of this video how the shape, the density, the volume, and the compressibility of the three states differ. But actually deep down, the kinetic particle theory can help us to understand why do they actually differ. In order to do that, it considers three factors in terms of the particles. Firstly, the spacing between the particles. Secondly, the arrangement between the particles. And last but not least, the movement of the particles. And this forms a very simple mnemonic of S, A, M. SEM. So these are usually um, descriptions that we use to refer to the different states of a metal. So let me show you a quick simulation uh, which can be useful as you're revising through this topic. So this simulation is actually called the FAT simulation of um, states of metal. Um, you can actually find it in this link over here or you can just get it from one of your teachers. So what I have over here is um, so let me reset this. So what I have over here is actually the microscopic view of a solid substance. By microscopic, it means that we are looking straight into the solid 
and observing how the particles behave like. So what you can observe over here is that in a solid structure, the particles actually are arranged in a very orderly manner, right? And they have um they are closely packed. In fact, there's not even much space between them, and they seems to be vibrating about their own position. They are not floating around or whatnot. As we move on to a liquid phase, what you notice is that it's slightly more disordered, but somehow um the particles are still closely packed. And you see there's these two random particles that have been floating around. So actually this is something that we will consider when we move on to the concept of evaporation. But more or less, the particles are simply just sliding over one another. And last but not least, let's take a look at how the particles in a gas behave like. This shows how the particles in a gas behave like. Notice that all the particles try to occupy the entire volume of this container. They are moving far apart from one another at faster speed in random directions and the arrangement is very very disorderly. So this simulation actually serves as a very good um, tool for you to revise about how the spacing, arrangement and movement of particles are like for the three different states of metal. So let's move on to back to the slide. So as I mentioned that there's three factors that we consider. So let's first take a look at in the solid structure itself. So in the solid structure, what you notice is that the spacing of the particles in terms of, in terms of that, they are very closely packed together. Um, in terms of the arrangement, it's a very orderly arrangement, a very neat arrangement of rows followed by rows followed by rows. And in terms of movement of the particles, they simply just vibrate about their fixed position. So you notice over here that there's this diagram on how to draw the structure of the solid and you will be required to draw this out. So a good um, advice for students would be to always remember that in a solid particle, because they have to be orderly arranged, what you can do to help yourself is to actually, when given a blank box, you could draw grid lines before drawing the respective particles. This will ensure that you uh, fill up in an orderly manner, so that's one thing to take note. And also, um, do take note that you are required to fill up at least 3 quarters of the box and at least 3 layers of atoms itself. All right? And of course, the atoms, uh, in, a ca in the case of a pure substance, they should be all of the same size. So in terms of vibrating about fixed position, you notice over here there's a short clip to show what exactly is it like. And that's for the solid state. How about the liquid state? In the liquid state, clearly you can see from the diagram itself that it's no longer as orderly arranged. In terms of the spacing of the particles, they are still somehow closely packed, but slightly further apart than those of a solid. In terms of the arrangement, it's a slightly disorderly arrangement, um, but it's still very closely packed together. Uh, later on, you'll see that there's a big difference between this as well as the one for gas. In terms of the movement of the particles, they simply slide over each other. No longer vibrate about fixed positions, they can move but only over one another. So in the gas itself, what you realize is that the particles are very very far apart. In terms of the, in terms of the arrangement of the particles, it's very disorderly, it's a random arrangement. In terms of the movement, the particles are actually moving randomly at very high speeds and in fact in all different directions. In the drawing of the structure of a gaseous state, we often just simply draw three particles to represent how far apart they are actually from one another. And of course, these particles must be in a random arrangement. So having said that, how does knowing all the SAM, the spacing, arrangement and movement of the particles help us to understand about the properties that I mentioned just now? So let's take first take a look at in a solid itself. For a solid, it actually has a fixed shape because the particles are held together in an orderly and fixed arrangement. Hence, the shape of the solid will always remain as it is. In terms of density, the density of a solid is always higher as compared to a liquid or gas. And this is because the number of particles per unit volume um, is actually very high as the particles are very closely packed. So you'll notice that for a given volume of the diagram itself, um, there's actually a larger number of particles as compared to in a liquid or gaseous state. 
In terms of volume and compressibility, the reason why the solid has a fixed volume and cannot be compressed is due to the fact that the particles are already very closely packed with one another, such that there's not much spatial um, allowance for the particles to be further compressed together. But what about the other two states? So now that you have understood um, what I mentioned about the solid state, do take some time to try to explain the properties in your worksheet or in your notes using the kinetic particle theory that um, you have learned. So why is it that the shape of a liquid is not fixed? Or why is it that only for gases could you compress the substance itself? So think about the reason based on the three factors that we mentioned just now, which is the spacing, arrangement, as well as the movement of the particles. Use those to help you answer how the properties. So in summary, you have learned how to state the kinetic particle theory, which is the fact that all metals are made up of particles that are in constant and random motion. We have also talked about how to describe the solid, liquid and gaseous states of metals in terms of the spacing, arrangement, as well as the movement of the particles. So with that, you should be able to attempt some of the questions in your notes or worksheets that your teachers have assigned to you. So with that, I will put an end to this video.